Okay, with us is Vijay. We now in Native Bar, and now we have this special excursion, the personal from the Vijay. Hey guys, uh, my name is Vijay Mudaya from uh, Native Bar here in Singapore. Very happy to have the guys from Korobo here with us. Uh, so welcome to our bar. Uh, basically, what we do over here is we work with local and regional produce. That means we use things like Singapore gin, Indian whiskey, Sri Lankan Arak, things that are closer to home. And that extends to our entire venue space as well. So things like our furniture, our aprons, our ceramic cups, and even the music that we play, uh, it's things uh, from local musicians. And this is made from the food waste. So like this is the turmeric, the blue pea flowers. Uh, this is from our coasters. This is leftover coffee grinds from the, the cafes. These are like tea leaves from uh, leftover making of kombucha. Orchid flowers we did for an event and then just, just continue. And then he mixes color with like starch and paint and then starts painting on it as well. The symbol of Singapore. I think the symbol of Singapore is definitely the food and drinks. We've, it's Singapore's uh, melting pot, so you get a lot of locals, you get a lot of people from around the world, so you get a lot of different cuisines, so definitely on that angle, yeah. That's cool, and uh, which ingredient can represent Singapore? Uh, there's definitely quite a few ingredients that represent Singapore. You have things like uh, blue pea flowers that we use in the Peranakan food for a long time, things like candle nuts, a lot of tropical flavors such as uh, you know, jackfruits to <laughs> durians to mangoes to tamarind, just to name a few. Some list uh, for those uh, who come to Singapore first time. Mm. Okay, the first place is native and the second one? Uh, I think you definitely have to try a lot of the cocktail bars. You know, there's things like Manhattan, uh, Operation Dagger, Atlas, uh, just to name a few. But you also have to definitely try the street food over here because it's really good and it's very affordable as well. Do you have some... Uh, you Specific place? Dish or something like that. In, I think, uh, maybe Hawker Chan's uh, soy sauce chicken rice. So it's the world's uh, most affordable Michelin star cuisine. So definitely, but it's a long queue. So then uh, I'll show you the composting at the back. So this year, uh, we, we found the, uh, we, Actually, yeah, actually in France a little bit, but we found a space because here is tight. So maybe a few months we are moving the garden to a physical space, and then over here we just grow like micro herbs, and then we got the composting. So like, so over here is the compost up. So we put the food waste after we finish the shift at night, and then four to six months we churn it. You got your inspiration from person or from the...? Um, I think with a bit of traveling and of course meeting like the local farmers, meeting like grandmas with old school recipes and try to sort of relieve those uh, recipes again. I think that's where we get our inspiration from people. Okay, and yeah. your favorite book? I'm not sure if you heard of this title called The Fountainhead. It's a, it's a fictional book. Do you know the author? Uh, Ayn Rand. So it's ah, uh, Anne Rand, yeah. Anne Rand, yeah. So she wrote like Atlas Shrugged. Uh, it's a long book, like yes, seven, yes. eight hundred pages. Uh, but the Fountainhead is pretty good. Yeah, Th that's cool. I, I saw upstairs you have so many uh, books. Uh, mm. Not about the bar, yeah. <laughs> more about the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, who is your favorite chef? Uh, I really like uh, Alex Attila from Dom. So uh, you know he uses all Amazonian ingredients in his cuisine, and uh, it was one of our very inspiring factors for what we do here as well. Okay, uh, what's important for the young bartenders to remember? Um, I think it's very important for young bartenders to remember uh, things like hard work. And uh, I think a lot of young bartenders these days, they're very obsessed with using like expensive equipment, but with the basics, you can actually create really good drinks. So always focus on uh, the foundation first. Tools or knowledge? Knowledge. <laughs> always, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, if, if you can choose just one tool, yeah, which one it will be? Shaker. So for me personally, I think it's very important for us to always remember in the industry to always make sure that we uh, work responsibly, use products responsibly and connect with our customers based on that ethos. 
So we're making uh, one of the drinks from our menu. It's called the pineapple arak. So we use a Sri Lankan arak in this cocktail. It's made from a coconut flour. So in respect, we use the entire coconut in this cocktail. We use coconut water, coconut flesh, coconut oil, coconut husk. So just about using the entire product. And we also use some pineapples, but we actually infuse the pineapple skins with the cocktail. And then the leftover pineapples, we just oven bake it for a garnish as a, something you can have while you're having your drink. So we use the entire pineapples, we use the entire coconuts in your cocktail. So nothing goes to waste. Cheers.